Today, we are going to bring you along for a raw and unfiltered day in our life living on a sailboat in the remote Pacific. We will show you the madness and wonders of our boat routines and the good, bad and ugly ways of this lifestyle. Wrong went wrong. Shit. Did we just hit ground? So the entire season is suddenly in danger because we hit ground and we don't know what's broken. So much worse than we originally thought. We got uh, 2,000 miles to go before Indonesia. I don't know if we're going to get there. We will show you how we utilize modern technology and century-old sailing techniques to navigate the breathtaking yet unforgiving Pacific Ocean. Today we want to show you what a normal day in our life look like. This will be the fourth sail of the crew and they're getting pretty good at getting the boat ready and sailing this boat. So it will be interesting to see how it goes today. This morning we're leaving from an anchorage just off the coast of Port Havana, Vanuatu. We will be doing a short sail to a beautiful snorkeling spot on the other side of a small barrier island called Moso. So we're about to go for a sail this morning and lift the anchor up and one of the first things on our checklist is to prep the sail, ready to go. Okay, so before we go, we always have to check both engines on both sides. We have to check the engine oil and the sail drive. The sail drive oil. <laughs> I am trying to tidy up all the little things might be flew over way during weird sail. So, so make sure nothing little things spread outside. You might lost. So I am on shift today, which means I'm the captain of this boat. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm being honest though, I don't really know what the next step is. <laughs> start the engines. Oh yeah, that one. So we're gonna start the engines. We're gonna do the port side first because that's my favorite side. And then you hit the start button. And then you ask someone to politely go check if there's water coming out of the engine because that means it's cooling off, right? That is right. Water is out. Thank you. And then you do the same thing to the starboard side. The next step is pulling the anchor out of the water so we can go. So their job will be to pull up the chain with a little remote, make sure it doesn't get twisted, make sure it doesn't get all built up, make sure the bridle doesn't fall into the water. My job will be to help put the boat over the chain so it comes up more smoothly. And they will tell me where the boat needs to go with cool hand signals. The fact that I know that is really good. That's really good. <laughs> Heck yeah. The anchor's up ready to bounce out of this joint, except I don't know what direction we're going in <laughs> or where we need to go in. Good job! <laughs> Once the sails are set, the rest of the crew can head off for free time while the person on shift strays at the helm. In between shifts, you can usually find us reading, working, exercising, cooking, or napping. So today is a specifically special day because I'm finally taking a shower. <laughs> I'm going to wash my hair and let the shampoo wash the rest of my body because we have to conserve our water usage on this boat, which is something that is very challenging at times. Hence why my hair looks like we just cooked bacon on it. <laughs> I'm making a protein smoothie. You guys want to know how I eat kiwi? Yes. Yes, they do. <laughs> First, you use your nail, push the kiwi. No need to have a run, just halfway. And then you press into the hat. <laughs> it's pretty good. So we are arriving at our first destination. We are gonna make a little stop to go snorkel. So that will be very cool. Salem is taking us in. Woo woo! <laughs> <laughs> and then we have Tammy in front that is ready with the anchor. Nice. 
So if you can also now just like look into the water, see if you find a spot where it's sandy and no coral heads, no bombies, nothing like that. The bombies is like rocks. I am paying attention to the depth to make sure we can get a, find a good spot to anchor. And I'm using the engines to steer um, and making sure I don't hit that rock. <laughs> I see the anchor in sand over there and I see chain all in sand right up to here. So we hit the nail on the head, we thread the needle, we did it. Okay. Yeah, I guess so. Nice. <laughs> Now that we have anchored the boat, we're ready to go for a snorkel. But first, Tammy is going to dive down to ensure the anchor is safely set. It was really nice to see. Um, there was loads of fish. It was super clear. Um, the coral was pretty healthy. There was a lot of dead coral, um, but the coral that was there was pretty good. I think it was definitely from like cyclones that, or just the natural disasters that have been happening in this area. But did you see in a lot of the, like everywhere there was like channels? Yeah, yeah. And that would have been from the volcano, from the pyroclastic flow. Mm would have just taken out all channels of coral. Really cool to just anchor and jump in the water, like super randomly. It's a very difficult decision of whether we have iced coffee or warm coffee. Because we've been in the water, so it would be probably really nice to have a nice warm cup of coffee. But when we make the iced coffee, we can make it really fun and put like salted caramel in it and some protein powder, so and put it in the blender to make a frappe, a salted caramel frappe. So, <laughs> I think I've just convinced myself I'm probably gonna have iced. So we're just selling you lunch before we move on to the next spot. Eating some egg, leftovers, bacon. <laughs> what do you call a fish with no eyes? What? Fish. <laughs> <laughs> what do you call a dinosaur with no eyes? <laughs> do you think he saw us? What you got a deer with no eyes? No idea. <laughs> so we are done with lunch, so we are gonna go off to our next destination. It's called Nuna. It's a little bit further north. It's a separate island. It has a marine conservatory. So that's gonna be super cool to check out. Hopefully it's some great snorkeling there and hopefully we'll go into the village and meet some cool people. When you're sailing, you just have to deal with things as they arise. As soon as we left the anchorage, the wind drastically picked up out of nowhere. It was intense, but the untrained crew handled the situation with determination and grace. These are currently the vibes. <laughs> ah, the 
of the day when shit gets so rough, we all just lose it. <laughs> Not again. <laughs> We're literally getting a car wash. Look at this. We went from a nice, calm anchorage snorkeling to 35 knots of wind, <laughs> putting in a triple reef. <laughs> what do you think, Tammy? Very dramatic. <laughs> one second so peace, and one second like a storm, and then one second we come back to peace again. <laughs> but only what are we doing? It's in Kiwi. <laughs> <laughs> we are moving to the island right across to us, to a village. Upon arrival in Pulura, a small village on the island of Pele, we met a villager named Lauren. So these are the eggplants and then I have parsley there. Yeah? Yes, and then some lettuce there, spring onions here. Oh yeah? The spring onions and then... Uh, a bunch of spring onions. Yes. Lauren told us how she had no choice but to start gardening due to the rising cost of food on the island. For the same reason, they are also now teaching the kids gardening at school. Smell good? Mm. This smells so good. I want to smell. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> Some of they sell them at the market, they're much bigger. You can take that one as well. Mm. Oh yes. my gosh. Hello. Hi. So cute. <laughs> Oh, see, he likes that. Yeah, you <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, we'll try. <laughs> That's cute. Okay, so today we're talking to the chief of Wasiri. Was a chief of Siri from Biliwa. From Biliwa. Yeah. Um, about so they've implemented a marine protected area here for the past 13 years. Yeah. Um, so I'm just going to ask him some questions and see if we can learn some more and see, yeah, what they're doing and why. So how big is the marine protected area? It's about uh, uh, from here to Zanzi is about uh, 600 meters. Yes, okay. have you seen a difference? We see a lot of big difference. Fish that uh, we didn't see before, now we see and we try to identify with this type of fish. Uh, the difference is more fish outside too. Yeah. Because the fish, uh, fish they keep on moving. They stay there for us, uh, safe, but then they have to go out. So if for example, in the cyclone or when there's not a lot of food, do you bend the rules so that people can fish there? I can bend the rule. I can bend the rule if it comes to wash the wash. If a cyclone, uh, heat does disaster, uh, people don't have enough money or things like that, I send them to uh, go there, get the fish and sell it to market, make some money to live. Yeah. yeah, I think that's really important. It's community-based community based management he knows far better than i do about the about this area and obviously as you say like protect the people of your community mm -hmm. instead of it just being a one strict rule because then there's, there's, people need fish to survive yeah yeah more fishermen now okay. we've got more fish too yeah because of con conservation okay. so the, the fish out of the conservation area Conversion is an area that fish they breed, they, yeah, they feel comfortable there. Yeah. But when they breed them and they out, that's when we get them. I used to go to some workshops, so they train us how to conserve some of our places. So while I am thinking of that, then uh, the Pisco Volunteer come over, and then we, we uh, I met Chris. And then I talked and then we started to do planning to set up the conservation areas during 2000. After we finished speaking with Charlie and the chief about the marine conservation efforts on the area, Doc prepared to see some patients from the village. Thank you very much for short uh, walk that you do in my village, but to us it's a very big, uh, uh, thank you very much. You're very welcome. Okay, thank you. We say, as we say, Bongwea. 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 Yeah. Bongwea. 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 
<laughs> you have to spit apparently afterwards. Yep. You do? Yeah, everyone spits. Yeah, everyone spits. Ready? Yeah. Okay. Cheers. Cheers. Booyah? Uh, booyah. Booyah. Bula. 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 What is it here? Bumuya. 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 Okay, cheers again. Bumuya. Bumuya. We gotta write that down. After a successful visit in Pulura, it was time to head back to the boat for dinner and some chill time. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump in the salt water to make myself wet, and then I'm gonna get out and then shampoo and rinse off in fresh water so I don't use more fresh water. So, let's get to it. I was like, no. <laughs> She's like, if you're, just because you're not washing it doesn't mean you can't brush it. Hello. Hello. What's for dinner? Tacos. Tacos. <laughs> oh, shoot. Today we're having sweet potato tacos with some beans, feta cheese, cilantro. Yum. You. Yum. Um, all right, over to Rose and Thorn. So that's something we do every single day. Everyone tells a good thing from the day, a bad thing from the day, and what they're looking forward to. I can't remember the one other one I was gonna say, so I'm just gonna say this one. Nice. Talking to my mom, because I haven't talked to her in a hot minute. My yeah, thorn is that we didn't work out today. Yeah. We really lost our streak, but it's okay. We can count snorkeling. I Rose was having the shower. I was gonna say that. Yeah, we had a communal shower. So today when we go to the village and we met a cat, a little kitty, and when we're trying to leave, the cute little kitty just keep following us like and we run and he just run after us and we stop and we run and he just run after us. His rose today was that you took 35 naps. <laughs> one more than yesterday. I didn't take any nap. Yes you did! You just took one! I wasn't sleeping. God. You just said you I just, just said I just woke up. Up. No, no. That's why I didn't hear you guys. Alright, my rose was when the storm hit. <laughs> and we're up there like reefing. I thought that was so much fun. I had a great time. Okay, so we learned everything we can about anchoring and it was all going smooth, but then when we tried to leave this morning, the anchor was wrapped around a bommie and then so Mara had to jump in the water and guide us out and then when we brought it up, the anchor got stuck and everything that could have gone wrong went wrong. Shit! Shit! Who just hit ground? Shit. Shit. Alright, we just need to... Uh... Let's just get out into the deep water. All right, uh, Salem, can you just be up front? Like, really keep an eye out. Let's go like super, super, super slow. Two knots. If you see anything, just shout, and then we will just like back it up, okay? To so just stop it immediately. Shit. The entire season is suddenly in danger because we hit ground and we don't know what's broken. I mean, the day, day started horrible. I had a migraine. I had eaten gluten the day before. I was feeling like shit. Then the anchor got stuck in a bummy. Uh, I had to jump into the water and kind of guide the boat out of it so we get the anchor up. The second I got up, I was like, okay, I can finally relax. The anchor suddenly got stuck on the boat and then I had to run and fix that and while I was fixing that the boat was drifting away so when we got back to it we were in a completely different place and we couldn't go back where we came from uh, and it was low tide we couldn't get out there so we had to go a different way to try to get out uh, and I was just not clear in my in my message like saying we had to really slow it down and try to get back on our track because I was just I was just not focused at that time and then suddenly this coral just appeared right in front of us and we're not able to stop in time 
and now the rudder might be broken. It's a lot just for this one little thing that I didn't repeat. And I know it's all my fault because I'm the captain. It's a lot harder than I expected. <sighs> so yeah, we uh, got in the water, we looked at uh, the keel and the rudder and um, unfortunately the rudder is bent uh, when we hit the coral and uh, it's broken at the back half. It, hit, it, it bent back and hit the back of the boat and broke the uh, portion of it off. So much worse than we originally thought. We got uh, 2,000 miles to go before Indonesia and um, I don't know if we're going to get there.